Hello, this is G4 Geomatic Resources in Houston, and today we do a quick video, the first of two, on an overview of the measure of foresight routine. We're going to quickly go over the settings, how to set your backside foresight prisms, uh, job, how to set that up with the properties, do a quick backside setup to orientate, um, and then we'll get into the meat and potatoes of the measure of foresight routine. This video is uh, put together by John O'Rourke, technical support and assisted by Jeff Ryle. So here's our contact information. Uh, feel free to reach out if you need any help. So what we're gonna do is, uh, this is a back of office. We set up a point number one uh, that had RTK control point, and we're gonna back site actually point number five. And from this back site, we'll measure uh, mobile sets to our foresight points and keep moving around. And this will allow us to reduce and carry control in the field and check into control and check our closure in the field. And uh, we can, in the second video, we're gonna take this data into infinity to adjust it. So the advantage of the measure foresight routine is we can do direct and reverse, we can do mobile sets uh, if you needed to. And the neat thing about the mobile sets is it'll reduce the direct and reverse phase one, phase two. And the, the point that it computes for the foresight will be an average of this direct and reverse. This will tighten up your control point just to make it a lot more accurate to carry control in real time in the field, okay? The measure of foresight routine is included with the standard stake uh, and measure captivate routine that's on the CS20, or it can be on board the TS13, 16, and MS60. So this routine is standard, um, and it's not as rigid as a traverse application. That could be a plus or a minus. So if you're doing rigorous traverse control, we recommend using the traverse routine um, that has to be purchased separately, um, but the measure of force is included. So this is another option to transfer control uh, quickly and efficiently. We have other videos on the traverse routine. So please uh, refer to our YouTube web website on that. And that'll help you if you need the, the full blown traverse routine. What's also neat is um, in this case, we, we closed out. So we started at point number one, and John uh, did the measure of foresights. And in real time in the field, we can just quickly do a quick inverse and check to make sure, in this case, we're within 400s horizontal, 200s in vertical. And that way we can just uh, check the closing point before we head back to the office. And once again, we'll reduce the stuff in infinity in the, uh, in the following video. Let's take a quick look at the simulator. And what we're gonna do is quickly come back in this case, we have our job here called Foresight Test. And right now it's locked. Um, if you hit function unlock, you can unlock it. And that's just handy just to lock down your job so you can't change it. Uh, if you click on here and go to job properties, in this case, there's our job name. Uh, we had it on Texas South Central with a code list. And we're doing everything on state plane grid. So in this case, we hit the TS scale, check this box and use the current setup because we have control points loaded and that will calculate the scale factor. Uh, a couple quick things to look at uh, before we get going is, in this case, we use two prisms, uh, two Leica prisms, uh, round prisms, and I wanna make sure that my backside and foresight that I'm using is uh, set up correctly before we start the fuel procedures. Um, we recommend using the same prisms, but you can set different prisms if you want. So in this case, we'll hit settings, TS instrument, measure target, and measure would be the foresight, so use the round prism, uh, if you had a 30 millimeter prism, you can go up there and select that. Or in this case, with the round prism, and that's uh, negative 34.4, like a constant zero. So we have a video on the different prism offsets as well. Uh, the setup will be your back site. So in this case, I want to make sure that I have the right prism set up before I start the procedure. Uh, another thing that we can quickly check is under settings, TS instrument, atmosphere corrections, you can type in the temperature and pressure. Once again, these, can, these uh, parameters can be edited if you made a mistake in infinity, but it's also good to make sure that's set up correctly before you start. Um, so once again, when the job is set, uh, if you had a control job, you can click, go to properties, link your jobs here, or uh, hit function, unlock and function home, and then come up here, design job, then pick your control control job here, okay? All right, so the first thing we need to do is uh, go to setup. It's important that we set up on an on 
In this case, we use a known back site or you can set an azimuth. But before we get in to the measure screen, we've got to configure and do a back site and orientate the instrument. So we hit OK. Uh, there's our jaw. And we'll pick the point that we want to set up on, which is point number one. And in this case, uh, we'll pick the uh, coordinates of that point. And because of the scale factor selective on state plane, it calculated the scale factor down here. Okay, so once we hit OK, and then we pick the point that we want to back site, uh, we'd hit distance and we check into the back site and then hit set. Uh, in this case, I'm doing this similar, but hopefully if we were out in the field, this should be down to a couple hundreds and then set. So it's really important. So before we, uh, we can use the, the routine, we've got to set up our back site. So I'll hit the measure screen. Let's assume it's all set up correctly. Hit function tools. That's how you access the measure foresight routine. Okay. So we come in here. Um, it'll ask us what measuring sequence you want to do. So if I have a backside and foresight in this case, so we can do backside, foresight, foresight, backside. If you're strictly one man using one prism, um, we want to pick the backside, backside, foresight, foresight. And we want to make sure we use the auto target that will snap to the prism. Quality control, you can set this to whatever parameters you want. So three seconds, you have a five second instrument, maybe bump this up to five seconds, and uh, then we hit OK. All right. And that's just a quick overview of the different uh, settings. So let's dig in a little bit deeper uh, to the actual uh, field operation. Hey everyone, this is uh, John O'Rourke with G4 Geomatic Resources, and I'm just gonna show you how to wrap a set of angles using the Measure Foresight application. So I've got the total station set up on a, a point that I just uh, measured the foresight on. Um, so I've set up on uh, control point three. I'm just setting up the instrument here now. Um, I'm gonna back sight control point two. So I've gone ahead and measured the, the height of the instrument. I'll show you how to do that. You just hit measure here. I'm using the MS-60. The height of the instrument is 4.838 feet. So I hit okay. It updates there. Uh, got the scale factor applied for uh, Texas Central Coordinate System we're working in. I'll hit okay. I'm going to go ahead and select uh, control point two, which is our backside point. Control point two, and the height of the target is five feet. I'm just going to do a quick prism search to make sure that I'm on the prism. Lock the target. And make sure I'm locked to the right prism. I'll take a quick distance shot. So you can see that the horizontal distance and the height check in. I'm just going to set the gun. I'll accept that. And now I'm going to go into the measure application. And if I hit function tools, this then brings me into the measure foresight application. So there's a bunch of different options here. You can do backsight, foresight, foresight, backsight. Uh, backside, foresight, backside, foresight. I just, I just go backside, foresight, foresight, backside. It doesn't really matter. It's just going to go in that particular order, and it's just going to mean out all your uh, angles and, and distances that you shoot for each of the control points for your backside and your foresight. Uh, so, if you go under quality control, these are my tolerances. These control points are set using RTK, so uh, I'm not too worried about. It. I might get a couple of tolerance messages, but this is just for. Uh, demonstration so you hit OK here and I want to use the current back site as the reference point yes I do so now it's asking me to measure the foresight so I've got to turn the instrument to the foresight lock the target and it's locked to control point four yeah. And now I'm just going to do three sets of observations on each point. So when I hit measure, it's going to, you know, wrap these angles between these, uh, my back sight and my foresight, and uh, it'll show me the splits at the end. So let's do this. Points scored. Uh, you can, it, it, it's asking me if I want to throw another. So you can measure multiple foresight points in one go. If there's another foresight point, you could turn the angle to that point and shoot that point in as well, and it'll. Uh, 
wrap angles to all the foresight points, but I'm just going to do the, the one foresight. So I'm going to hit done. Target lock lost. Lock the target. Point stored. Target lock lost. So it's measuring each of the uh, control the points in two phases. It's telling me there's a five second uh, error and succeeding the five second tolerant. I, I'm gonna tolerance. I'm gonna go ahead and hit yes. Point stored. Target lock lost. Lock the target. And I will accept point that stored. again. Target and I was turning lock. back to control point four, which is my foresight. Lock the target. Point stored. And target swapping lock the scope lock. again. And taking another observation. Lock the target. Point right, yes. stored. And now it's turning target back to lock control lock. point two. Lock the target. So what's going to happen is going to take all these redundant observations and it's going to mean them all out and then you're going to have a final uh, mean uh, value for your observations. Point stored. Target lock lost. Lock the target. I'll accept that Point again. Stored. Target lock lost. Lock the target. Point stored. Target lock lost. Lock the target. Point stored. Target lock lost. Lock the target. Point stored. Target lock lost. Lock the target. So there you can see your standard deviation, uh, your horizontal and your vertical. It's pretty good. Um, you know, uh, you, I'm just got it did three sets. Uh, I'm just gonna move the instrument now to CP4, and then I'm gonna uh, backsite CP3, which is the current setup station, and then I'm gonna uh, uh, run another set of angles on the uh, my foresight, which is my initial setup point. Um, so you, you you pretty much just leapfrog around the points, and uh, you know, kind of like the, it's basically a traverse. Uh, the cool thing about this one is that uh, in between, like right now, when I hit OK, I could now go into the measure app and start measuring points from this particular setup. And then when I'm done shooting in my observations, I can go and, and set up and do measure foresight again to establish my foresight point. So effectively, uh, you know, creating a traverse loop, which you can then uh, calculate the misclosure using infinity, which is going to be the next part of the video. So I just wanted to show you uh, the process in Captivate and how, how to run through this. Um, yeah, so uh, stay tuned for the uh, video on Infinity and then disclosure. Okay, so um, let's take a quick look. Uh, if we come back in the job here, if we just click on the job, go to View and Edit Data. Uh, if I went down to one of the points that we did the measure foresight routine on, we can edit that point under observations. And you have sets down here. Uh, this will show the average. Uh, angle right, vertical angle. And this is actually the average slope distance. And the more will show the residuals uh, and spread. Sets here will show the different um, sets. And if there's one that you wanted to uncheck, uh, we recommend doing this in Infinity, but you can come in here and uncheck that if you wanted to. So we can edit that information in the field as well. Okay, so as John said, we'll do another video on importing this data into the Infinity to reduce it. But I um, hope you found that helpful in uh, collecting the foresight, using the foresight measure routine in the field. Thanks for watching.